central leadership is faced with a conundrum in Telangana. The party, it seems, in the state is split between two groups. One group of native leaders rooted in the RSS ideology and another group of strong leaders who have come from other parties. The former are ideological loyalists while the latter are election winning leaders crucial for the BJP's game plan in this poll bound state and these are the leaders who do not mind deserting the BJP if they do not get their dues. The central leadership of the BJP is now engaged in a process of firefighting to bring its house back to order. On this episode of State of Play, I tell you all about what is happening in Telangana BJP. Welcome to the show. I am Anusha Ravi Sood. Until a few weeks ago, the news cycle, buzz on social media, statements of BJP leaders from Telangana, even the grassroots level activities being taken up by the party in Telangana would have you convinced that the BJP is the primary contender against the incumbent BRS government in Telangana. Not the Congress, which is the primary opposition party, but the BJP. So what if the BJP does not have grassroots level presence across the state? So what if the BJP does not have enough cadre to take credit for to say that they have representation across the entire state? So what if the BJP doesn't have many popular leaders? So what if the BJP doesn't even have candidates for more than half of the 119 assembly seats in Telangana? Perception building has been the strength of the BJP and winning two assembly bipoles has helped the party fuel that perception. Although it's a different matter that both seats were won by candidates who came from BRS, a different party and won on a BJP ticket. One could point to the GHMC elections, the municipal corporation elections of Greater Hyderabad, to show that the BJP can pull off election results to its favor. The BJP emerged as the second largest party in the Greater Hyderabad municipal corporation elections. One could point to those local elections to say that the BJP can pull off an electoral result to its favor if it puts, it en puts its entire might to it, right from a parade of union ministers for a municipal corporation elections to Hindutva hardliners delivering one speech after another filled with communal rhetoric. But even within the 15 assembly seats in Hyderabad in the previous elections, the assembly elections, the BJP won only one assembly seat and that particular MLA Raja Singh now is suspended from the BJP for delivering alleged hate speech repeatedly, continuously. What also contributed to the BJP's perception building exercise is the continuous defections of leaders, including incumbent legislators from parties like the Congress who joined the BJP. One such defection led, necessitated a bipole in Munugod, which the BJP lost, the BRS won, and the Congress, which held the seat before, was pushed to a distant third. Now, these defections from the Congress were a direct result of factionalism, internal bickering and dissidence within the Congress fold. And leaders, cadres were left jittery in the Congress. All these components, along with grassroots level activities undertaken by the BJP's state leadership in Telangana, helped the party gain some ground presence. But the same was inflated when it came to perception management, especially with space and time on mainstream media, helping the BJP project this perception that it was far widespread than it actually is in Telangana, making it seem like the sole contender or the primary contender against the incumbent BRS government and not the primary opposition party, which is the Congress. The same perception would have continued had it not been for two factors. One, the results of Karnataka Assembly elections boosting, giving the much needed fillip for the Congress in Telangana. The second component of it was the internal dissidence and bickering becoming public in Telangana BJP. So what has caused this fissure in Telangana BJP, which seemed to have had its narrative game going in its favor? Well, it is the group of dissidents 
group of lateral entrants to the BJP who have come, leaders who have come to the BJP from other parties like Congress, like BRS. This group of leaders insisting that a tall leader with much more appeal, like an Etala Rajender, who was a minister in the KCR cabinet earlier, who was expelled from BRS and then joined the BJP, somebody like him who has appeal among his community, who has appeal across the state, should be given charge of the party's state unit. Now, Etala Rajender being the strong man, tactic user that he is, wants nothing less than the position of state president, currently occupied by Bandi Sanjay, another OBC leader. But here is the catch. Etala Rajender may be part of the BJP, may even want a lot of things from the BJP may want to helm the party. He, however, is not an ideologically aligned leader for the BJP. If anything, his political career shows that he comes from leftist leanings, believes in socialist welfare um, as a whole. He's a socialist by nature. However, now with the BJP, even those within the BJP believe that Hindutva, the primary pole plank of the BJP is something that Etala Rajender does not subscribe to. So how does the party accommodate somebody who doesn't subscribe to its core ideology of Hindutva as somebody who will head the party, helm the party of party's affairs in Telangana is the big question. Rajender, however, believes that his strong personality will bring with it a lot of political gains for the BJP and he wants his dues. His strongman tactics have definitely upset the state unit president, uh, the state unit president of BJP, Bandi Sanjay, who does not want to cede space. Seeped in the BJP's ideology comes from the RSS background and somebody who's grown or who's come up through the ranks of the BJP from being a grassroots level worker to a corporator to, na to an MP now, Bandi Sanjay has also gained support and love not just of the cadres in the BJP but has also tried to gain much more goodwill from voters through his padhyatras, several public rallies across the state for years now. What has left the BJP in a fix is also the fact that both these leaders, Itala Rajinder and Bandi Sanjay, came from backward class communities. Now, this is the vote bank that the BJP is hoping to woo in the upcoming Telangana Assembly elections. While Bandi Sanjay hails from Munurukapu community, Etala Rajinder hails from the dominant Mudiraju community. Both these communities are numerically strong which makes them a formidable vote bank in Telangana. In Telangana, backward classes, Dalits and STs form the largest chunk of voters and this exact community lines or caste lines are what parties why to woo in elections. The BJP, which is keen on wooing backward classes this election, does not want to break this delicate balance that it has managed to bring thanks not just to its original leadership but also the leaders it has been able to bring on board over the years. In a bid to assuage the situation, the BJP central leadership is said to have offered Etala Rajinder who was asked to come to Delhi. There are also speculations that he met Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma before his meetings with the central leadership of the BJP. However, he has been offered, according to sources, the position of the chief of the campaign committee, which elevates his position in the BJP Telangana state unit. Etala Rajinder, it seems, is not very happy with that offer and the party is still in the process of convincing both its key leaders in Telangana to work together. Meanwhile, back in Telangana on Sunday, a secret hush-hush meeting of sorts was called by supporters of Bandi Sanjay who decided, it seems, behind closed doors that they will make a case, they will make a representation to the central leadership of the BJP against Rajinder and for Bandi Sanjay and why the party should not look to make any huge leadership changes at this point in time. Those supporting Bandi Sanjay in Telangana BJP insist that in replacing Bandi Sanjay as the state unit president of Telangana BJP, the central leadership of the Safran party could make the same mistake it did by not replacing its Karnataka state unit chief Nalin Kumar Katil in the run-up to the elections. They insist 
that Bandi Sanjay should continue as the president of Telangana BJP if the party wants to have a fighting chance in the upcoming Telangana elections. Why is it important for the BJP to keep these two backward class community leaders together and, and insist that they work together because this community, like I said earlier, is a decisive vote bank. The TRS is already in the process of wooing multiple communities, whether it is Dalits, whether it is OBCs, whether it is their core vote bank of Belamas as well. The BJP is right now in a race against time to bring on board social engineering, which will help the party take away votes, not just from the Congress, but also from the TRS, which is now the BRS. Telangana Chief Minister Chandrasekhar Rao came to power twice with the Telangana Pride card in 2014, 2019. Both times, the Chief Minister had the opportunity to play the Telangana Regional Identity card. This election, it is going to be different. And the BJP, it seems, has realized that its social engineering has to be on point to bring on board a combination of multiple communities, especially backward class communities. The BJP wants to present itself as an alternative to BC communities that have been voting TRS so far. And for that, it is imperative for the BJP to have leaders representing those cars as the face of the party when it heads into elections in Telangana. The devastating results of Karnataka Assembly election, it seems, has also taught the BJP that regional satraps and caste leaders bring with them the potential of better electoral prospects. Even as names of other BJP leaders like uh, Union Minister MOS Kishan Reddy or the National Vice President of the BJP DK Aruna are making the rounds as probable names who can replace the leadership in Telangana BJP. Both these leaders are unlikely to bring to the BJP what it wants as far as backward class votes are concerned. Those perhaps will firmly lay with Bandi Sanjay or Etala Rajinder. Caught between ideologically inclined leaders who have risen from the grassroots seeped in the ideology of the RSS but lack popularity and lateral entrants who come from other parties but bring with them a whole lot of appeal and possible electoral prospects, the BJP central leadership, it seems, is struggling for a truce in Telangana. With neither of the groups willing to give up on their stance, the party is now relying on several central leaders, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Amit Shah, who are scheduled to come to Telangana in the near future to try and resolve these issues amicably. We at South First will keep a close track on how politics plays out in election-bound Telangana. Do stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching.